Hi, Aaron here. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use Jira automation to implement design reviews into your Jira cloud workflows so that you can have an audit ready review process without the overhead of third party apps and electronic signatures. Here's an example. Suppose I'm triaging a new defect and I've just completed the initial regulatory impact assessment, the initial technical impact assessment, even the initial risk assessment. And I now need to route this for formal review uh, by a business and technical reviewer before it can be accepted into the backlog as a known issue and possibly even reported later on as a known anomaly. So to start this review, what I'm gonna do is transition to a pending review status. What just happened when I started that review process? Well, the business and technical reviewers all just received an email notification that this bug is waiting for their review. And they'll be able to move this defect forward uh, through the review process. As an author though, I don't have the ability to complete the review. All I can do is move this back to triage. So let's take a look at a reviewer now. Here's an example of the emails received by the reviewers. You can see it's sent by Jira Automation. And inside there's a little bit of information about the defect that's pending review, and there's a hyperlink that'll take them into Jira where they can complete their review. You see this email was sent to the technical reviewers and the business reviewers would have received something similar. Here we're logged into Jira as one of the technical reviewers where I can review all the information completed by the person that did triage. And if I'm ready to accept this defect, I can complete my review by transitioning to this technical reviewed status. System will prompt me for comments. These are optional. And I can complete my review. If I refresh my screen, we can see that the system has moved this back to pending review because the review cycle is not yet complete. But before it did it, it captured my name, my ID, and the timestamp of when I completed my technical review. Business reviewers receive the same type of email. And when they go into JIRA, they can complete the business review task. Now these business and technical review tasks can be completed in any order. I'm gonna review the information. And if I'm ready to accept this defect, I can complete my review by transitioning into the business reviewed status. Once again, prompted for comments. And if I refresh my screen, now we can see that this defect has moved forward into the backlog. The review cycle is completed automatically because all of the review tasks are now complete. And we can see down here that the system just captured my name, my ID, and the timestamp when I completed my business review. And the same information is still captured for the technical reviewers. Now, let's take a look at compliance and audit readiness. First, we already saw that the review actions were restricted by user permissions. Only technical reviewers could complete the technical review and only business reviewers can complete the business review. Next, we can see that the entire review cycle was recorded into the activity history of the JIRA issue. The actions of the reviewers, as well as the actions of JIRA automation are all recorded to JIRA's audit log. Third, the reviewer information is locked, read only, cannot be edited by users. And finally, we can see that these reviewer fields are included if we were to print this record or export this record for an auditor. Now that we've seen a demo, let's learn how to configure this. First, we need to configure user groups for our reviewers. To do that, we need to go to settings and then user management. Inside user management, we're going to select groups and then we're going to create a user group for each of our review roles. In this demo, I'm using business reviewers and technical reviewers. And of course, you're gonna tailor these names to match the review roles in your company's SOP. Next, we need to create the custom fields and workflow transitions to support the review cycle. To do that, we're gonna to go to settings and issues. Let's look at custom fields first. We created four of them for this feature. We created two fields for the business review task, business reviewer, which will contain the name and ID of the business reviewer, and business reviewed, which will contain the review timestamp. And both of these fields are read-only text fields. This is important. This is how we are able to lock these fields against reg regular editing by users. And we created the same two fields for the technical review task, technical reviewer, technical reviewed. And once again, they are both read-only text fields. We also created a custom screen for this feature called prompt for comments. 
This is an empty screen with no fields, which means that all it will contain is the default commenting feature. And that is how we were able to prompt the user for comments when they completed a review task. Now let's look at the workflow configurations. There are three statuses that we added to support this review cycle, pending review, business reviewed, and technical reviewed. Transitioning into pending review is what starts the review process. Once an item is pending review, business reviewers can transition to business reviewed to complete their review, and likewise technical reviewers can transition to technical reviewed. Once the item is moved into business reviewed or technical reviewed by a reviewer, then JIRA Automation will pick it up, and JIRA Automation will either move it to to-do if the review cycle is complete, or pending review if one of the review tasks is still outstanding. Now let's look at the two transitions for the reviewer users, complete business review and complete technical review. Each of these transitions has a single condition applied. For the complete business review transition, we are restricting this transition to only members of the business reviewers group. Likewise, for the technical review transition, we're restricting it to users in the technical reviewers group. This is how we're able to restrict both of these actions to only the appropriate users. We could also see that both of these transitions were associated with the prompt for comment screen. This is that custom screen with only the commenting feature that we looked at just a few minutes ago. We also need to configure the transitions to continue and or complete the review cycle. The complete review cycle transition, which goes from one of the reviewed statuses to to-do, has a single condition that hides this transition from users. This way we can restrict this transition to only JIRA Automation. We have the same configuration applied to the continue review cycle transition, which is the transition that moves it back to pending review. And this transition is also hidden from users, which limits it to JIRA Automation. Okay, so now we need to configure the automation rules. And to do that, from within our project, we're gonna to go to Project Settings and then Automation. And if you happen to be using Jira Premium, you can go to your Site Settings and then Global Automation. But for most of us, let's go to the Project Level Automation here. And you can see that we have four projects, uh, four automation rules configured for this review cycle. We have one rule that's going to clear the reviewer fields, one rule that's going to notify our reviewers, and then these last two rules that are going to actually set that reviewer information, capture that reviewer information when they complete a review action. Let's look at these in the order that they execute. Okay, the first rule that fires is our notify reviewers rule. And this rule has a trigger with two actions. The trigger is the transition from initial triage to pending review. So this is the transition that starts our review cycle. And when that transition happens, our actions are to send two emails, one to each of our reviewer groups. So we have one rule, that's one action that sends an email to the technical reviewers. And you can see our subject line and our content are tailored for the technical review task. And you can also see that we're using something called Jira Smart Values to dynamically populate the content of the email and the subject line with contextual information about the issue that caused the trigger. So we can put our issue key in the subject line, issue key summary description in the body, and very importantly, we're also able to put a URL directly to the issue in the body of the email so that the reviewers can click into JIRA and complete their review. So this is an example for the technical review email, and the next rule looks almost exactly the same, but it is for the business reviewers, and it is tailored for business review. Uh, these JIRA smart values are very powerful, and there's a lot of different ones you can use, and you can reference Elastian's documentation to learn more about them. The next two rules, set business reviewer, set technical reviewer, are the rules that capture the reviewer information in those reviewer fields. So let's look at set business reviewer first. This rule has a trigger, an action, and then two conditional actions based on an if-else logic structure. The trigger is to transition into that business reviewed status. So when the issue transitions to business reviewed, we know that somebody just completed a business review task. And so when that happens, our first action 
is to set our two business review fields. So that we have the business review reviewer field where we can write the user's name and ID. In this case, I'm using email address as the ID. You can use their system ID as well. And for the reviewed field, we are able to enter a timestamp. So see, I'm able to enter the current time. That's what now means. And I'm able to format it as a long date time string. There's lots of different formats that you can select from as well. So these are the, that, the JIRA smart values, uh, some additional smart values that are available to us. There's a lot of them that are available. And um, you can see you can do some very powerful things with them. So th that's the first action is to write a reviewer information using these smart values. Then we have an if statement. And here we're going to check to see whether or not the technical reviewer field has been populated. So if there's an actual technical review information in the technical reviewer field, then we know the technical review task is done. And since the technical review task was already done and we just did the business review task, that means we can move this issue forward to the to-do status because the review cycle is complete. If that's not the case, the else here is instead of going forward, let's go back to the pending review status so that the technical review task can still complete. So this if else logic structure, checking that technical review task is how we're able to check to see if the review cycle is complete after the business reviewer does their task. And then we know where to transition the issue based on whether or not there's still a pending task to complete. So that was the business review task. And we can see the set technical reviewer task looks exactly the same, except it's configured for the technical review. So we have the transition into technical reviewed is the trigger. The action is to update the technical, the two technical review fields with the, the with the timestamp and with the user information using the same smart values we just saw uh, just a bit ago. And then we have the same if statement except instead of checking to see whether technical review is already complete, we're checking to see whether business review is already complete. And once again, based on whether or not the review cycle is finished, we can either move forward to the to-do status or move back to the pending review status so the review cycle can continue. The last rule that executes is the clear reviewers field. And this is a simple rule with a trigger and an action. The trigger is a transition back to initial triage. So this is basically if the user cancels a review cycle or needs to reset the record by transitioning from to do back to initial triage to redo something. And in any case, if you transition back to before the cycle executes in the workflow, then you want to clear out the reviewer information that has happened so far. And you simply do that by setting all of our review fields, all of them, to a sort of non-value. You might be wondering why I'm not just blanking these fields out and instead I'm setting them to these three hyphens to represent a sort of horizontal line. And the reason is because of a long-standing issue or limitation in JIRA. And that is JIRA does not allow you to blank out a read-only field once it has a value in it. Instead, you must write a new string, a new non-zero length string to the read-only field. You can use any string you like as long as its length is greater than zero. So you can use lines like I'm using, you can use a non-breaking space, you can use NA, not applicable, whatever, whatever string you like to enter, you can use that to clear these fields. I prefer using these three hyphens uh, because it's easier to troubleshoot than a non-breaking space. It's universally understood by users that this means no information is entered. And, and so it's a clear way to to blank out a field without actually making it empty. And that's it for this tutorial. You'll find these review cycles convenient for supporting bug triage, design reviews, or anywhere you need an audit ready review cycle but without the support of full fledged signatures and approvals. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.